and Cloud, it is almost the new year, but it is still just after Christmas, which means we need a Christmas New Year message, and that's what we're gonna try to do today. I'm Jamin. I'm Jamin. And I'm another one, and I'm also Jamin. And our episode on tongues was a good month or two ago, but you can <laughs> check that out and see if you figure out whatever that was. Um, uh, so, uh, anyways. <laughs> Let's talk about Jesus' birthday today, um, because as Olivia has pointed out, I don't know if it's ever been on camera, but this is probably, you know, snowy December wasn't his birthday, nor was it snowy where Jesus was. What? They didn't have snow in the Middle East by the equator? Yeah, so... we. I'm shocked! I do love that in all the pictures of, like... You know the nativity it's always like snowing you're like okay guys mary it was a christmas miracle james mary had a baby in a stable and you also need to paint them as like freezing to death like how hard does christmas have to be you know like but that's always a picture it's like <laughs> but but isn't hay warm no not that warm um so when was his birthday? That's been a question that people have asked for some time. And there is a, a possible theory looking at a few weird passages Wait, in the Bible. Wait, it's a theory? It's a theory, because we don't know. It's a Christian theory? And that's just a theory. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know. That what was the joke I was trying to reference. It's Sorry. a YouTube joke. If you don't know it well enough like I don't, then it made no sense to you either. Uh, anyways, when is his birthday if it's not December 25th? So the first passage we're going to look at and try to determine Jesus' birthday, these are going to sound like a weird string of passages, okay? So try to bear with me here. Our first one is in Romans 10, 14 to 18. I'm nervous already. In, in, which, in which Paul essentially says, let's just go to verse 18. Uh, he basically says, like, have they not heard about Christ? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. And we're like, what are you talking about, Paul? Like, who, who's they? Like, who told the whole world that, about Jesus? Well, he's, uh, he's quoting a psalm there, Psalm 19. So when he says, like, their voice has gone out to all the earth, He's referencing Psalm 19, which says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. The voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In other words, the stars, the cosmos, the sky, the heavens oh, have so told us that Jesus is born, is here, exists. Does this have to do with the wise men? Right. So the wise men uh, were more or less wise men or Chaldeans. Those particular people in the Old Testament, like they, they were known to deal with different ways of trying to ascertain divine wisdom. And astrology was one of those things. So they were astrologers. And one way or another, using their astrological means, they managed to discover by looking at the stars that Jesus had been born. That's part of the Christmas story, right? They look at the stars like, oh, this somehow tells us that this prophetic word about the king of the Jews has, has now been born. And so they, they use astrology to figure that out. Paul says, of course the whole world knows about Jesus. Why? And he quotes a psalm. The heavens said it. Where are the heavens? Well... Again, <laughs> the stars have spoken it out. So everyone should know because the heavens themselves have declared it. Casey's making the face that says you need to explain yourself. Well, I mean, the wise men part does make sense. Uh -huh. But the average people wouldn't necessarily know that. Right? Is that where you're going? Well, no, it was more of point? just like, that sounds totally crazy. Like, the fact that... You know, a star appeared, and so yeah. that foretold, it's like, when was the last time you noticed a new star? Like, oh, when was the last time you saw a star? You live in the city. I mean, that's, <laughs> that is also true. Let's say you don't have street lights everywhere, and the stars are all the light you have at night in general. 
you probably pay a lot more attention. I mean... There's a lot of supernovas if we go by those stars. Well, and there's... I mean, the moon can be bright some nights. Yeah. That's going on our next t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the moon can be bright some nights. Casey Mellinger, Jackson Cloud. <laughs> yeah. But I do think we do need to talk about this a little bit more because... The wise men and astrology is not a spiritual gift that right. we as Christians use. Yes, so unless somehow, you know, being a Sagittarius or a Virgo can actually be something. Well, let's, let's say this, okay? The Hebrews stay away from this stuff because they know that it's forbidden to them. Mm -hmm. So much so that at the very beginning of your Bible, what does God make in the heavens? A greater light and a lesser light. <laughs> like, there's nothing more caveman sounding in the Bible than like Genesis, where it's like, and then he make big light and small light. You know, you're like, guys, it's the sun and the moon. Like, you know what the sun and the moon is. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't poetry for Neanderthals. I know, right? So, so that's like the thing. It's like, it's the sun and the moon. Why don't you just say the sun and the moon? It's because the Hebrews worked really hard to stay away from terms that implied other gods and in other cultures the sun and the moon are gods. gods because even to the hebrews as weird as this sounds the stars were spiritual beings because they moved they were alive and they didn't live on the earth they lived in the heavens so when you see the bible refer to the heavenly host you're supposed to be understanding that they thought of the heavenly host not only as stars but those were beings those were angels those were the little G-gods. Those were heavenly beings up in the sky. And so therefore, it wasn't necessarily that they, uh, that things like astrology weren't real in their minds because when they moved, they were telling you something. It was just in the Hebrews' mind, that wasn't something you were supposed to have access to, things like that. Sorry, in this context, there's just a verse that is hitting me very differently. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Abraham is the one that's told that he will have as many children as stars in the sky, right? Yep. So, so there, it's not necessarily like the, the Sunday school, oh, you know, there's just so many stars in the sky, there's going to be more people on the earth than you can see stars in the sky. It's more like there's going to be more of humanity than there is of angels, kind of. Yes, actually, I would say... That that's also supposed to get him to be thinking of resurrection life way before that's even like come up. In other words, Abraham, just as there are many stars in the sky, so will your descendants be. That's not just making him think like your descendants, there will be a lot of them, but also your descendants, there will come a time where they too will enter into the heavens and put on this immortal life, just like the heavenly beings have. So I, <laughs> that's a much stronger passage than I think we're supposed to think. Now, at the same time, it was also communicating you'll have a lot of descendants because God also uses a different analogy and says, you'll have more descendants than there is sand on the beach, you know? So like, it does mean numbers, but the fact that you would say your children will be like heavenly beings, mm -hmm. that's a much bigger statement. So anyways, all that being said, now we've gone on this rabbit trail, like the stars, even to the Hebrews, were a bigger deal. It's just like they were cut off from them. So for like astrologers who are using occultic techniques to figure these things out, again, God in the Bible never necessarily says like that stuff isn't real. He's just saying that's not for you to know. Um, and so um, one of the only times where you even see the Bible like bring up the names of stars and constellations and whatnot is with Job. And the reason I think there is for that is because I don't think Job was an Israelite. I think he was uh, someone who followed God outside of Israel because there's a lot of things he references that don't sound like things that Israel's Israelites are allowed to reference. Not only does he talk about constellations by name rather than greater light and lesser light, He's like Virgo and you know, you're like, whoa, dude, you you just broke like the Bible Bible's like rules, you're not supposed to do the that. Unwritten rules. Yeah, yeah. He also talks about Leviathan, which like that was like a Mesopotamian 
almost little g god of sorts. So like he gets in, it's almost as though he brings his own culture in and subjects it to God because he follows God, right? And when he does that, you see him um, breaking some of the rules that the Hebrews generally follow in their passages. Anyways, all of that being said, if we were to get back to where we started, God essentially says, or Paul essentially says, look, skies have already said, everyone should be aware that Jesus exists because the skies themselves have declared it. And he's referencing a psalm when he does that. How does this help us figure out when Jesus came to exist? Now, that's another question. And it's possible, possible that we find the answer in Revelation 12, 1 through 6. You guys know that passage in Revelation where, like, let me read it to you and see if this sounds different to you based on the way that we've been talking. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who has ruled all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God in his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Now, uh, this is telling many different stories, right? It's telling us in an apocalyptic kind of way, Jesus' birth, a woman giving birth to someone who would save us, who was then caught up to God's throne, who ascended into heaven, right? It's also telling us about a war in heaven, because Revelation tells us that Satan rose up with a bunch of angels and tried to usurp God's throne, and so they were cast out of heaven, and that's what the story just told. Because again, what are angels in their minds? What are spiritual beings in their minds? Stars. Stars. Jesus says in Revelation, he's got seven stars in his hands. And then he talks about the seven angels of seven churches. So these stars in Jesus' hands, like they would have been like, ah, they're angels, right? In the same way, we now see like the angels rise up with the dragon and then they're cast out of the heaven, uh, heaven. So like there's this like rising up of angels and they're cast out. They're no longer allowed to be there. Is it possible that when the wise men ran into Mary, that they explained to Mary, here's what we saw in the skies that led us to come here. So or at this point, Mary didn't know. Mary didn't know, but then she did know because she was told. Or maybe just like, maybe the legend was passed on from the wise men to other people. Like, here's how we figured it out. And eventually John gets the legend and he's like, oh, okay. So astrologically, here's the constellations that they saw. Here's what they saw happening in the sky that was leading them to believe that this king of the Jews was being born. And then as a part of Revelation, John writes it all down. Maybe, maybe. Because we just saw the sun mentioned like at a particular point on a constellation and the moon mentioned in a point. So like there's this almost like <laughs> it's possible John's just like taking everything that the sky would have looked like that night and Putting is it is that like a normal thing to actually like put the sun and the moon into parts of constellations? Um, Not in parts of constellation, but I feel like I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> well, here's here's possibly what they saw. If we were to try to like track all that out in the sky, here's what they might have seen. And this is where it's hard because you don't have a picture in front of you. Um, but then you might have seen the constellation Virgo. If the sun is clothing her, so her mid-body, uh, then there's 20 days a year open for Jesus' birth. So we have to stop and say, if the sun is right there clothing her, we've, got, we've narrowed it down that there's only 20 days where that happens in the sky. Okay? But if the moon is at her feet, as I just said, then we actually have a 90-minute window <laughs> as to when Jesus 
uh, was born because that only hap this, this all only comes together at one time. Right. And if the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation 5.5 5 also happens to be the constellation Leo, then there's this king star in the constellation that comes into this picture as well. And that would have been important to the wise men. And eventually, anyway, I, I, I even get confused as to what I'm saying here. I'm just trying to relate the information that some have kind of like investigated. Eventually, we get to September 11th, 3 BC. Now, to us, September 11th stands out in a bad way, right? We, we, don't, we don't like that date. But to the Jews in 3 BC, on September 11th, that was the Jewish New Year. Which we can already feel like the themes already, right? Like, New Year is started, and bam, the Messiah is born. Like, that's a fresh start. There's a new thing that's happening. There's, and it also says a lot of other things to them. Like, the Jewish New Year actually would land in the fall, because that's when the crops are all ready to pick. And so, like, it's a time of plenty. It's a time of, of lots. So, like, in their mind, like, the, the year has started. It's the Garden of Eden. There's all this stuff here, all this crops and produce. Yeah. So is there a lot of lots of wife too? Lots of what? Lots of wife salt? No, no, no. Sorry, bad I thought, joke. I thought you said lots of wives. No, I lots. I heard wife. lots of wife, and I was like, <laughs> lots of wife. That's actually this what I heard too. This doesn't sound like this is going somewhere nope, good. No, I meant lots of wife is in lots of salt. But nope, nope, not that. <laughs> uh, bad joke. Anyway. But anyways, the, the Jewish New Year, like if Jesus is born on that day, and if John was trying to communicate that through the way that he put together this constellation sounding stuff of the skies one night, because someone communicated it to him at some point from the Magi, and that's why Paul was saying like the skies have already told us Jesus exists. Like if all of these verses actually are coinciding together because they all kind of knew this legend, just as we know the legend, we just maybe didn't know all the details. Like we know the legend of the star leading them to to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If all this is coming together, then we see Jesus being born on the New Year. We're about to enter into the American New Year. You know, it's not the same date, uh, but it is. A, it could be like a, a new kind of symbolism to us as well. Just as Jesus comes about with the New Year, with a fresh start. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, there's a, a new spin that we can take into our own New Year's as well. That's weird. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> We've certainly gone an interesting route tonight. I will give you that. 